In this video, I'm going to explain how Apple, or any other mobile device maker presumably, could create a secure backdoor for use in case of government warrants, court orders, national emergencies, and such, that would not be usable by anyone else. Now, important caveat, this is not an argument that Apple should do any such thing, just that they could. There is a difference. First, a little background on the way it works now. Apple signs every version of iOS and all iOS updates with signing keys that only Apple has. I'm guessing they probably have a set of such keys and retire older ones as they add newer ones to the set, but for purposes of this discussion, we'll just pretend that they have one. We'll call it SIGPRIV for Signature Private. It's just a random encryption key they made up and keep to themselves. It exists only in some secure facility at Apple, not in any mobile device anywhere. SIGPUB, the corresponding public key, is built into the iPhone, and the iPhone uses it to verify the authenticity of iOS during boot up. Since only Apple has SIGPRIV, only Apple can create new versions of iOS that will successfully load and run on the typical user's iPhone. Now, it's important to note that if SIGPRIV ever leaked out of Apple and fell into the hands of malicious parties or just became public knowledge, this would be an extremely bad security breach and would probably be a far bigger tech news scandal than any security hole or malware that's hit iOS so far. But in nine years of the iPhone, I haven't heard that any such thing has happened. Why not? Presumably because Apple has very tight procedures of how these signing keys are handled, such that not even a rogue employee at a high level would be able to just go get the key and write it down. So, while we don't know exactly with what procedures they're keeping SIGPRIV secure within their company, we would know that these procedures have been working for many years. On to the iPhone. When you start a secure iPhone-to-iPhone -iPhone communication session, for example, a FaceTime video call between your iPhone and a friend's iPhone, the first thing that happens is that the two phones negotiate a session key, which we will call SK, that will be used to encrypt all data during the session. What is the exact procedure by which two iPhones can create a new random session key that they both know but no other device on the planet knows? Well, it's probably something similar to SSL, also known as HTTPS. A brief three-way handshake between the two iPhones and a server at Apple allows a new just-made session key to be shared between the two iPhones with absolute assurance that nobody else has that key. Not even Apple server, by the way. It's the same way that your web browser establishes a secure session when you visit a secure site, like your online banking website, for example and how it knows that no man-in-the-middle attacker has obtained the same session key. Pretty much all internet security currently depends on this technique. Once they've established the session key, the two iPhones engage in a continuous two-way stream of video data packets, and these packets are all encrypted with SK using standard AES encryption. Since both devices have SK, each iPhone can decrypt the packets it receives from the, old, from the other iPhone. When the FaceTime call is done, both iPhones delete SK, and so if anyone on the internet recorded those FaceTime data packets as they went by, that person will never be able to decrypt those packets because that session key is now permanently lost. So, here's how a secure backdoor would work. Apple would make another private key, we'll call it BDPRIV, which stands for Backdoor Private, and would keep that safe and secure at Apple just like they already keep their signing keys. The corresponding public key, BDPUB, would be built into new iPhones just as SIGPUB already is. When two iPhones are communicating securely, as in the FaceTime example just described, each packet contains video data encrypted with SK, but would also include SK encrypted with BDPUB. The receiving iPhone would ignore the BDPUB encrypted SK, 
or maybe it could just compare that value with its own copy of the same value to ensure that the other iPhone is complying with the backdoor protocol. But basically, the receiving iPhone just does what it does now, which is to use SK, which it already has, to decrypt the video data and play it to the user. Now suppose the FBI gets a warrant and records data packets en route between two iPhones. Then they get a court order requesting that Apple assist them. They send the BD BDPub encrypted session key to Apple, and Apple decrypts it securely and privately using BDPriv. Then Apple sends that session key back to the FBI, and the FBI uses it to decrypt all the video data in those recorded packets. It's as simple as that. What about iPhone unlocking? When a current model iPhone isn't locked, like when you're actively using it, iOS has a data encryption key, DEK in this diagram, that it uses to read and write encrypted personal data in the device's main storage. When you lock your phone, iOS deletes its own copy of the data encryption key, and the only remaining copy of that key is hidden away inside Apple's secure enclave, and will be released by the secure enclave only if it likes your attempts to submit the unlock code, which it also has. Upon successful unlocking, the secure enclave gives the data encryption key back to iOS, so you can use your iPhone normally again. Now, in the new backdoor-capable plan, when you lock your iPhone, instead of deleting its copy of the data encryption key, iOS would simply encrypt that key with BDPub. And while the iPhone is locked, it would willingly serve that value to any cable-connected device that requests it. Since only Apple has BDPriv, only Apple would be able to do anything with that value and would do so only in response to a proper court order. Now, both of these schemes could be improved by mixing the iPhone serial number or the user's Apple ID into the backdoor data in such a way that the holder of BDPriv, Apple, would be able to know with certainty which iPhones they were being asked about. For example, the cable requestable value could be the data encryption key, AES encrypted with the iPhone serial number, then public key encrypted with BDPub. Since the FBI doesn't know the data encryption key, they would be unable to change the serial number in that value and would have to tell Apple the correct serial number so that Apple could get to the data encryption key. Presumably, there would be some way for the FBI to discover the serial number if they have the iPhone in their possession. Another improvement for unlock this phone requests would be if the user's unlock code was also included in the cable requestable data. However, since the typical user's unlock code is much too simple to resist a brute force attack, and there's no secure enclave outside the iPhone to slow down such an attack or absolutely terminate it after 10 tries, the unlock code would have to be concatenated onto the end of the 256-bit data encryption key. Then that full string would be AES encrypted as a single document with the iPhone's serial number, then public key encrypted with BDPub. If done properly, this would secure against a brute force attack and would enable Apple to provide the unlock code in addition to, or instead of, the data encryption key. So why make this video? Personally, I would be just fine if Apple never put any such backdoor into their products. And I think there's some pretty good arguments why lawmakers shouldn't require Apple to do so such as criminals can always use other encryption techniques. Also, Apple's and its customers' civil liberties might include the right not to have such a backdoor built into their stuff. But of course, if lawmakers do decide to require it and the courts don't strike those laws down, then Apple won't have much choice but to implement it. And as a user of iOS devices myself, I would hope that their implementation would be the highly secure arrangement described in this video. But the main reason I made this video is because I've been mortified and dismayed to see many otherwise intelligent, educated tech commentators saying that a secure backdoor is impossible, and often saying so in incredibly dogmatic terms. 
Either there's a back door for no one or there's a back door for everyone. Either it's encrypted with no back door or it's not encrypted at all and may as well be sky written. If you think a back door could be secure, you're a crypto denier. You believe in wizardry. You're engaging in magical thinking. You're imagining you live in another fictional universe. And you just don't understand that that's not how encryption works. Among encryption experts, there is 100% agreement on this. A secure backdoor is provably impossible. Now, regardless of what you think about the wisdom of implementing or requiring a backdoor, regardless of what I think of the wisdom of doing that, the question of whether it can be done should be strictly a matter of fact. And I think I've demonstrated here that the fact is, yes, it can be done. If I'm wrong about this, I truly would like to know that, but please don't just tell me I'm wrong, or that smart people agree that I'm wrong, or that I don't know what I'm talking about, or that I should leave it to the experts, or that I'm some sort of dangerous kook. If you want to tell me something I don't already know, tell me specifically what would fail if Apple implemented the backdoor scheme detailed in this video. Precisely how would it fail? Please tell me about that. That's it. Thank you for watching my video.